Hello, you're watching a series on Sugar Bites Factory. My name's Tom Cosm, and this video we're going to be focusing on the modulation matrix, which is this grid-shaped area in the upper right here. A modulation matrix works by taking a source, which is a signal processed by something like an LFO or an envelope. It's generating a signal like this LFO. You can see it's pulsing up and down. So that's considered a source, and then we apply that to a destination, a destination being a parameter within the synth, such as the pitch of an oscillator or the cutoff filter, for example. Um, this particular modulation matrix is quite interesting. Uh, it's got some pretty standard matrix features, but there's also some advanced features down the right hand side here, which I'll get into near the end of the video. But let's go through the basic stuff first. So we have eight slots on the left of the grid. These are the source slots. And by clicking on one of these, we can choose what the source is, whether it's an LFO or an envelope or the pitch bend or a mod wheel, you can choose whatever you want to be a source. Then down the bottom, we have 10 slots for the destination. So by clicking on one of these, we can select, uh, one of these kind of parameters or areas in factory to send the source that is generating the signal. So to give you an example of this, I'm just going to play a note for you. We have one single pulse sync oscillator playing here. Here's the volume here. And I'm going to bring the cutoff filter down to halfway. Now I want this cutoff to move by itself. I want it to morph and evolve and I don't want to be sit here playing with the dial. So that's a job for the modulation matrix. So I'm going to do that by selecting LFO1 from one of these slots. And you'll notice that it's already selected here, but I'm going to select it anyway. Go into the drop down menu, select LFO1. So that's the source locked in. This LFO1, which is here, is locked in as a source. Then I'm going to choose the cutoff as the destination. So LFO on the source, cutoff as a destination, that turns this grid point into the intensity of the relationship between the two, the source and the destination. So I'm gonna bring this up and you'll see we get a blue circle appearing and you'll notice now that the cutoff is moving along with this LFO. Let's just play that. I can bring the rate up bring it down. So that's that's how, how you use the modulation matrix. Let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to pick a different function for the oscillator. Let's go for a wavetable. We'll go pulse with modulation wavetable and I will change the cutoff destination to the OSC1A destination. You notice we have OSC1A, OSC1B all the way through. So these are all the four different parameters for each oscillator that we can choose. The wavetable PWM only uses two which is A and B. So I'm going to select A as my destination and you'll now see that the wave uh, parameter in the oscillator is moving around. Now it's it's a wavetable so it's cycling through the wavetable really fast. It might sound bad, it might sound good. Let's have a listen. It doesn't sound that good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the rate of the LFO so it's nice and slow. Put this roughly in the middle so we get the whole cycle quite slow and I'm going to bring the intensity down a bit so you notice it's not cycling through the whole wavetable. And let's pick a different wavetable. That electrode one's nice and fun. Very good, but we've also got this pulse width. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use LFO2 as a source, and I'm gonna select oscillator 1B as a destination and give that some value as well. So now LFO2, which is over here, this is in our modulators tab, by the way, the LFO2, which is going at a different speed to LFO1, is now morphing the pulse width. So we've got this kind of two different speeds happening on the two key parameters of OSC1. Let's have a listen. Let's make them a bit faster. And I'll bring the cutoff filter back up. So now we've got a much more alive kind of sound. It's kind of morphing and taking on its own character. So that's with the LFOs, but let's talk about envelopes. So again, in the modulators tab, we have two envelopes, envelope one and envelope two. These are uh, typical ADSR envelopes, and I will do a video on these, all these functions of the envelopes, LFOs and sample and hold. But just for now, let's use envelope two, which is selected here, envelope two, and I'm gonna apply that to the cutoff, which is also selected here. So now I'm gonna give that some intensity. I'm gonna bring the cutoff all the way down. I'm gonna give that maximum, inten maximum intensity, and envelope two already has a long attack but let's bring it up quite long so you can see the attack part of the envelope which is this first kind of module here is applying to the cutoff now so it's really opening up let's give it some resonance bit of drive now the interesting thing with the matrix is you can also go in reverse so if I click on this uh, grid point here and bring it down so there's nothing. If I keep going down, we get a pink dot, and that means it's going to do the opposite. It's a minimum value. So if I bring the cutoff to its maximum amount and play now, it's gonna close it down for us. Let's try putting a high pass on there to see how it sounds. I'm 
I'm gonna keep it on low pass for now. We'll use a four pole. And bring it down and give that a positive value. Now, the other thing about the matrix is some of the destinations are general areas. They're not specific parameters. For example, I can choose FX1 as a whole as a destination. So if I choose FX1 as a whole, I need to specify in the actual effects area what that particular source is going to be modulating. And I do that by, with these little arrows here. So these are all turned off by default. Um, it's a spring reverb. Let me just turn it on. So we've got a nice little reverb happening here, but by enabling one of these arrows, I'm now going to tell the modulation matrix that I want this parameter to be controlled. So let's use the mix just for an example. This is the dry wet, and I'm gonna give the envelope two, which we've already uh, established to go to the cutoff. I'm also gonna assign that to FX1. So let's have a look and see what happens at FX1. Let's bring the mix down. So you can hear as that cutoff opens up, we also get an equal amount of spring reverb. Let's try a different different effects. Uh, I'm going to pick the what should we do? What's fun? A low fire. So this is accidentally making a bit of a bass sound here, but let's go with a low fire kind of thing. So we've got a reduce. Let's see how the crush sounds. Bring up the mix. I think the reduce will be a fun one to play with, and I'm going to attach that to one of the LFOs. Let's try LFO2. So we've already got LFO2 locked in as a source. If I go into my destinations, I'm going to pick FX2 as the destination and click on the reduce arrow here to uh, tell it that I want it to morph the reduce. And also make sure I bring up an amount for the intensity. Whoops, on the LFO2, excuse me. So it's far too much. I'm going to bring it slower, uh, down down in intensity. So the range is a bit less. You'll notice that the range sticks to whatever point you you select on the uh, parameter. So this is relative. And let's make that LFO a bit faster. LFO two. I don't know if I like it on the reduce. So let's put it on the crush instead. And let's put the low fizer before the reverb because the reverb would kind of it'd, it'd kind of flatten it out and smooth it out a bit. Now the other interesting thing about the sources here, we've got eight different slots that we can choose, but you'll notice the ones at the top are in orange. This is because these are special ones that can take actual audio signals as a source. These ones don't have audio signals as a source, whereas these ones can take oscillator one, two, the sub -osc, the noise, the mix, um, and actually use the level of the audio, the source of the audio to modulate something else. I will make a separate video on that because we're getting into kind of really crazy FM type stuff. So I won't touch on that today. The other features that we have down the side here, these are quite advanced features. We have an initialize button. So if I click this, it's going to delete everything. Let's try it. Boom, all gone. Back to our standard wave sound. But below it, we have this interesting dice character. And this adds random intensities in the positive and negative into all of the squares the longer you drag this up. So you can see how everything just starts filling up. So you can have a lot of fun with this. So we've got some pretty crazy noise going on when it's at its full. And I'll bring that down. I'm just going to quickly assign back again the uh, LFOs to the oscillators and the envelope to the cutoff, FX and FX2. So we've got this tweak thing here. Now this is interesting. What this does is it will cycle through the intensity values. So it will go all the way up to the minimum if you're raising it, and then it'll start coming back down, or it'll do it in the opposite direction. That's a lot of fun. There's also another option called mutate, which is similar to tweak, but it randomizes uh, the, uh, the the kind of the relationship between all of the individual intensities that you've uh, 
you've, you've locked in. So this kind of gives it a bit more of a random element. And there's also a target mode. This is for individually ta individually targeting single points, uh, which I won't get into for this example. But the cool thing about the tweak and the mutate and the target modes is you can also add another modifier to or a modulator to this particular knob. So at the moment it's set to LFO2. So if I was to bring this up, you'll notice LFO2 is now affecting this knob here, which in turn is tweaking all of these parameters. Let's see how that sounds. Let's get rid of the low fi there. It's making it a bit too harsh. Let's make a chorus instead. Bring up the mix and I'll assign uh, it to maybe the depth. If I bring the LFO2 speed up, it's going to really move uh, the rate that this is tweaking. So very cool, and you can also change what the modulator is with this drop down menu. Uh, a really good one to do, of course, is the mod wheel. So by having this assigned to the mod wheel on a keyboard, you can morph all of these intensity points uh, that you've created. Um, you can also randomize the uh, source inputs by using this dice button here, which I'm gonna do, like so, and you can also randomize all of the destinations as well. And you can also mute individual links if you wish to do so. So that's the modulation matrix in a nutshell. This is really, to me, the center uh, heart of where all the activity comes from in the synth and you can get really really far out sounds and crazy crazy stuff happening in here so um, i hope you hope you've enjoyed this check out the future videos there will be one on using these uh special sources in an upcoming video my name is tom cosm and cheers for watching <laughs>